Ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you for joining us for another episode of More Than Fitness. I'm your host, Adrian Conway. Today, I'm joined by Austin Maliello. Austin, how are you doing, my friend? Uh, I'm doing great. Uh, you know, it's always a, it's always a, a pleasure to uh, to hop on a podcast with so an OG like yourself. So I'm uh, I'm looking forward to uh, to dig in a little bit. So it's been some time for us since we've connected. So I'm I'm glad I'm here. Oh man, it has been some time, man. I mean, good night. I I gotta stay say and start to lead in with a little bit of just um, how like entertained and enamored. I was with you as a newbie CrossFitter way back in the day, right? And I say that because I, th I think we've got this new generation, bro, where it's like there's a lot of folks that might not understand um, how you really led the charge, you know, and at least in my opinion, you know, I'm, I'm referring to like you, James Hobart, on these like trips around America where I'm watching and like, oh, my goodness, CrossFit looks really cool. It looks fun. Um, oh, man. So OG of OGs, I'm, I'm, I'm honored to be sitting here with you um, but that. You know, I want to start kind of by asking, how's life for you currently? And can you describe to us a little bit of, of, of a day to day for you? Yeah, gosh, it's uh, I mean, I mean, overall, I mean, life is great from, you know, I think, you know, just from the, you know, as I just the, the title of the podcast, more than fitness. Right. I mean, you know, from what I do at CrossFit, but also, you know, my family and, and you know, my, my daughter, it's everything is awesome. So, the, you know, you know, all all, all good there. Um, and and from a day to day perspective, it's um, it it's all I it's very different than what I'm what I've been used to for almost over a decade. Where as you kind of alluded to, I've been doing CrossFit in the CrossFit space for a really long time, and whether it's traveling around the world doing seminars, coaching and owning multiple gyms, and, and doing that. Where now, um, my day to day is you know, you know I'm, I'm in my basement uh, most of the time, which is my office, which is funny to say, um, but you know. You know, with the with my role of overseeing all of affiliates around the world, um, you know, I would say it's it's very similar, it's just in different scope than you know running a gym or a couple of gyms in the sense of, you know, we have you know taking care of your people, your staff, my you know my team, and my team just happens to be you know all over the world, and 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 their job is to then take care of their respective communities, and it's it's no different than coaches, um, you know, that are coaching your classes at whether one location or a couple locations that are, um, you know, in charge of taking care of your members. So those are, um, you know, that's sort of the, the very high level of, of, of what I do. But I think, I think the, if you were to say, what is the, what's the driving force of what I do throughout the day is, well, it always comes back to how, how, how can we better serve our mm -hmm. affiliates in our community? Um, and what does that look like? Um, and what does that mean? Um, and, you know, as an affiliate owner, for, you know, I opened up an affiliate over 10 years ago to where it is now. The landscape has changed a lot. Um, and, you know, it's been, you know, owning a business is in any world, in any world, in any, in any you know, discipline is a challenge. So how do we help our affiliates become more engaged with us? That's really an important aspect of engagement with CrossFit because um, it's not something that, we, that has always been a, a charge. It's been more organic communication, whether it is from mm -hmm. us to them or, or affiliates to us, as opposed to, hey, we have some some tools and resources in a team that's here. Um, and we also want them to engage with each other, <laughs> um, which is was much easier to do, ironically enough, in, you know, gosh, 2010, 2015, that time, because the community was smaller, the message boards and that type of communication was just it was thriving. And now there's it's, a, it's just more of a disparate type of community because there's so many ways that one can communicate where we, it's just fragmented by nature of the space not not necessarily a bad thing and then how do we help uh, affiliates become and healthier and stronger businesses um you know when we think about two avenues you know we know that you know the the unchanging aspect is that co coaching what we do on the floor all of that that's a lot from an educational perspective but then there's also this whole side of how do you run a business and making sure you can run an effective and healthy business. And, and there's so many ways to do that, right? The affiliate model there, we don't tell you how to do it, but right. what are the best practices? How do we connect people? So, so really, and that's a new muscle that we're building of whether, you know, cause we're not telling you what to do, but you know, we're trying to provide resources, whether it's from us or in the community um, to, to make sure that our affiliates can be set up for success so they can do what they want to do, which is, coach and change lives on the floor. So that's sort of the, 
the the day to day piece. And, you know, there's always there's the back end stuff of like, you know, the I always you know, again, I try to speak in gym owner language because it's sort of like what what allows me to sort of get keep grounded. It's, you know, membership management software and all those things that you do that it's not like you didn't like that need to be efficient in order for you to have things running. And it's we have the same stuff within the walls of CrossFit that, you know, as opposed to it's not it's not membership management, it's affiliate management, right? So it's the Correct. same concept yeah. but at a different scale. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love it, man. You've got a, although your, your plate has evolved and shifted over the years, it's, it's certainly still very full. And can you tell me what is your direct title? Like, how can we, you know, how do we associate all these things that you're in charge of now? Yeah. Uh, so it's uh, a GM of global affiliates is I think okay. the, the official title there. Um, and you know, it's, um, but you know, it's in the CrossFit space. So, you know, t- it, titles are a funny thing where it's, you know, I always say like, well, what do we, what do, what do I do is, you know, try to take care of our gyms and, 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 and really it's, it's a leadership role for the teams and their teams. And I think that's something that is, um, it's that I've taken the most from, I, I think about like seminar staff, right. And, and, you know, you know, being on the road for so long where, as you know, running seminars and a flow masters, you know, people always used to say, what is a flow master, right? Because I always forget it. It sounds like a character from Lord of the Rings, right? Like what is a flow master? <laughs> yep. It's like, oh, well, technically it's a core supervisor, right? Where, you know, but really what is it? It's, you know, it's a, well, a, a good flow master, a good leader of their team, you know, basically uh, enables their team to be the best. They almost get out of the way, right? And they block and tackle. They do the things to allow their team to execute beautifully. And I think that's um, so. I take a lot of that concept of like, well, that's sort of what what my role is, just again at a at a different level. Yeah, and it's it's been very obvious, man, through your history and and through the through the time that I've gotten to follow you or work with you in regards to to seminars, um, or even just training opportunities. That, that you're you're pretty natural in the leadership role now do, do you feel like this was something like was this always the case for austin maliolo as he as he grows up and navigates childhood in the teenage years like were, were you always a leader man it's a, it's a great question and um you know i don't i don't know if i could say i was always a leader um in the sense uh and i guess because i try i equate leadership with a positive connotation and and i you know when i was a, when i was when i was a kid i was um i was a misguided youth um so so I, and i do think you know like anything and and certainly now that you know with with a little with a little one that's four and i know you you know and you have your crew is just i i often think of what's our job as parents and you know it's there you have character attributes that can you know be for the good or not right and and i and and i think that you know, growing up, I always, you know, what got me into a lot of trouble was, you know, I was a contrarian by nature, going against the grain. I didn't like to be told what to do, right? So this notion of being independent, this notion of, you know, yes, in the sense of not following, but, you know, but that notion of just not following, just not to follow can also can be very detrimental. And that led me down a lot of paths to just, you know, just making doing dumb things, because, you know, the right thing seemed was like, oh, well, that's what you should be doing as opposed to, no, it's, it's, it's okay to, you know, fall in line once in a while. Um, and the most important thing I learned through that, which I think is a turning point for me from a leadership perspective was when I grew up and I think this is the case for most of us that just led, you know, down a, a nefarious path for me, which was it, never taking ownership for my actions, my behaviors, mm. my words, those types of things, um, and real responsibility and ownership. And you get to a point in life, hopefully, that you have that realization of how important that is. And when I had that moment, that to me, that changed how I interacted with myself and how I interact with other people. And that was sort of that turning point, um, because that's, in my opinion, what leadership is, is ownership and at, at many different levels and that, you know, I, and, and having that understanding that I'm responsible for what I do, what I say, who I surround myself with, all of that. And, and that's something that as, as growing up, that's something that, you know, you can't expect any kid to have that, that perspective. Um, and I would say that, um, 
the, the challenging thing about life is that usually you need a forcing function in order to have that realization. And, mm. and I would, and a lot, you know, it's cause it's, it's not a, you know, it's, it's sort of, it's, it's empowering, but it's also very intimidating to, to say, wow, I'm responsible for, for X, Y, it's, it's a scary thing. So, which is why leadership is scary, which is why, you know, to have responsibility. And that's, you know, it's, you know, starting a business is a reason why, you know, owning, being an entrepreneur is a scary thing because you are responsible. Um, it is, it is on you. Um, and, you know, even things that are easy to push onto other people, you know, it's like, it's, you know, it's still your fault. It's your business. It's like, mm. oh, I didn't get the right, you know, you know, permit for my building. It's still my fault as a business owner, right? Like, you know, yep. um, so, so I think that it's a long way of saying the path in which, you know, that I, to where I am today, I'm very thankful for my, my path, but it was by no means easy. And, you know, you know, wish I didn't, you know, like we all look back, man, I, so I was a better, you know, better person at this point in time, you know, but like those, those lessons that have are learned, um, are, have been invaluable. And, you know, luckily family, you know, they care about you and love you through the, you know, through, you know, through all of it. And, you know, that's another good lesson that I've taken for, you know, as now a dad, and I look back at my, I'm like, okay, that's, there's a few things that you want to do. It's, it's that. Yep. Yep. Well, there's no doubt it takes community, man. And I, and I really think that, you know, it's important for everyone to, to recognize that, you know, there's a lot of people that have, have tremendous come up stories and they look back and they're like, yeah, I did that all by myself. Or yeah, I did that, you know, because of my hard work or my grit and my determination and all those things might be true, man. But it's like, it certainly takes community, whether it's friends or family or mentors. Um, but I really appreciate that you share that, you know, it didn't always come naturally to me. Sometimes I was a bit of what quote unquote a misfit or I was a rebel in my time. And I think it's important for the younger generation to hear that so that they can understand that no matter where they are currently, you know, as they mature, they will evolve. And it's okay to be someone different than you were two years ago. And it's okay to leave what you were doing behind and, and be able to move forward. Um, and, and ironically, I really believe this ties in nicely with the next question that I wanted to ask you is, do you feel like you were, you were drawn to CrossFit because of some of the qualities that CrossFit demands from us as individuals? You know, you're describing to me this journey for yourself and it's like, yo, accountability, responsibility, you know, some determination, some discipline, all these things. It's like, man, I, I so much fell in love with CrossFit because I was like, wait, there's only hard people are going to really want to do this stuff, like at that, especially at this level. So can you share with us a little bit about how you actually got that foot in the door with your whole experience with CrossFit and and what made yeah. you stick? It's it's a it's a great question, and it's one I I often think about a lot of of how because you know when I found CrossFit too, it was it was at a, a really low moment in my life where like mm. you know um, and but it was like I was starting to be on the other side of it, right? It was like if if you know life's full of peaks and valleys, and I had a lot of I had a lot of valleys, and 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 when I found CrossFit, it was sort of like that moment where I was you know. I, it gave me something, it gave me purpose. Mm. And, and I was a personal trainer at the time. And I found it, you know, it was a, the classic, you know, cliche story of, of back, you know, now it's a little different, but for a lot of us, 10 plus years ago, someone's like, you got to try this CrossFit thing. Right. And you're in a traditional gym and they, you know, and it, of course the workout was Fran, right. Oh, it's this workout. It's like there, it's the, it's like the main thing. And, you know, the thrusters are 95 pounds and, you know, your meathead in the gym, oh, that's light, right. That whole thing. And it just, and I did it and it, it just destroyed me. Right. And, and that to me was the first moment, like, I was like, there, this is something's different here. Yeah. Right. It really made, made the, raised my eyebrow. And, you know, and of course, when I went to CrossFit.com and I started like learning about it and the CrossFit journal and I was like, well, and then I, then I dug into, you know, every second counts, which was the first CrossFit documentary. Right. Um, and I, you know, I, I bought the DVD and, you know, and I was like, I'm going to compete. Right. So my mind went right to there. And, you know, what, what really drew me to it was that one, it was the hardest, everything was new. It was hard. And, and, but I was like, I, I was learning things, right. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I was, I, I was like a muscle up, right. Like, you know, I, I'll never forget the article that, that, that Greg wrote of, you know, I think, um, you know, the 10 ways to get kicked out of a, of a globo gym. Right. Um, and, and, and I'll just never forget, like, you know, and, you know, 
and I, I was like, I'm doing half of these in this gym. Like, you know, like throwing rings over rafters was one, right. And, and, and trying to, and learning how to do a muscle up as, as an example, um, dropping weight from overhead. And it, then it wasn't just dropping weight because, you know, it's cool. Like I, because you just, I failed a rep. Right. Like, right. Um, and you know, and that drew and it, it, that challenge that, the, the the learning too like in order like I, I realized in order for me to even think about doing this i signed up for my level one i signed up for my um the the olympic lifting seminar with bergner because so i was like i don't know how to clean and jerk or snatch i didn't even know what it meant i had to go learn how to do this and you know it was purpose driven and mm -hmm. fitness for me up until that point was i it was a it, i would say it was it was an it, it was a weak attempt at a at a at a vain type yeah. of, of nature, right? I need to look good or something like that, which, which, you know, in college or whatever it was like, it was, but then like, you know, out of I, I'll never forget. And this is a, we a, a weird antidote, but like uh, some, a buddy in college was, you know, cause he's like, you work out all the time. And I was like, hey, he's like, why? Like, mm -hmm. you don't play sports. Like, and, and then, you know, you get older, the answer, your why changes, but it, it stuck with me of like, a purpose, right? Like I didn't have purpose when I went to the gym yeah. and CrossFit, when I found it, it gave me purpose. And cause it's performance driven. You, it, you, you, you have to get better at things and you're going to suck at a lot of it. And it was fun because of the, all of those things. And that's what really drew me into it. And there was this whole community of, of maniacs that I started to, to learn about, right? Like yeah. you go to the, you know, and, and that was even more interesting. I was like, there's others out there, you know? And, and, and cause if you did CrossFit, well, this was 2009, like you mm -hmm. didn't know it, you, you physically didn't come into contact with another CrossFitter, right? Like it's just, it's just like the, it, it, they only existed, you know, on the blog, right? Yeah. On the message board. So that, and so you kind of felt cool, right? Like, like, Ooh, like, am I in this club yet? Like, you know, like, cause like you wanted to be a part of something. So that, that, that really drew me in at that moment. Um, and it, and it made me feel part of something bigger, which, you know, psychologically looking back, probably didn't know at the time, but it was really important to like, wow, like this, this is really special. Like it gave me something to be a part of. Um, and, and luckily, you know, competing back then was a little different than it is now where like, I was at, like, like it was still a pipe dream, but like it was one I, I and I was able to make it within a year. Yep. Um, but so I was fortunate that the times were a little different than now, but you know, that, that, that was able to suck me in even quicker. Yeah, dude, we're, we're all very lucky that the times were a little different than they are now, right? Like as the masses have come to our sport, the age has continually dropped. The capacities have exponentially risen and, yeah. and the time that you got to put in to get to that level uh, is for most people a, a much longer journey. But yeah. I appreciate you sharing all those things. I think the word that echoes with me is purpose. You know, I think that there are so many people who from the outside in, especially now, um, see what the CrossFit games are or see what um, people are doing within affiliates. And, and they just do see it perhaps as maybe this vain pursuit of like, ah, I want to have abs like that person or all, oh, you know, I want to be able to lift that weight. Mm -hmm. And while those things are really cool, a lot like what we talk about on this podcast often is that there are, are invisible and intrinsic things that happen to you when you're part of a community or when you do CrossFit.com and you're really trying to get the best out of yourself that, I don't think any of us actually expected when we started this thing. Right. And I, and I say that for myself, just coming in a lot like you, I'm wanting to compete. I was watching all you guys throw down and like the, the, uh, the, the rogue and again, faster throw down. Like so, so many of these jewels that existed online for me to find and explore. And I was like, Oh, I want to be a part of that club. I want to throw down with those guys. I want to, I think I can do those things. Like, how do I, how do I make this happen? And then of course, over time I fell in love with the community and I fell in love with helping other people who had no desire to go to the CrossFit games, right. just jump on a six inch box or, or pick up that, you know, that 35 pound barbell off the ground with it pain free, um, yeah. without a care in the world or without a worry. So I, I love that. I love that you, you hit that, hit that home with, the, with the purpose. Um, now, in my mind, I'm like, okay, so Austin comes in, he finds his purpose, he finds his drive, and due to your natural personality, it's like, you're, you're, you're on fire, right? So I envision you just being on fire, you're like, okay, I'm going to the games now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do X, Y, and Z. When did coaching, um, was it after your level one experience that coaching became like, okay, now this is really what I got to do is help other people? It's a, 
lo- love that question. And, and it's, and, and I often say this, and this is also how I, you know, cause the, the notion of the CrossFit games within the affiliate community and coach community, sometimes uh, it gets people emotional, right? A lot of people don't like the games. Mm. They say, you know, and, you know, and, you know, it's, it's CrossFit's not the games. It's this, that whole conversation that, that we've, we've heard. And I, and I'm, I'm very adamant that for me, I entered CrossFit as a selfish pursuit, pursuit for myself. And, you know, and, and, and I, I was like, I, I, it was for a workout for myself. And then I wanted to compete because it looked awesome. And it was cool. I was Same young here, and it changed my life to, and, 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 and to your point of this journey. And I was a personal trainer at the time. Right. So I was, I, w- I went to school for exercise science. I went through all of that. And, you know, and so I was, and I was a traditional personal trainer. So I found CrossFit for myself. And then, then I, and I went to my level one because I was like, well, if I want to compete, I should, you know, know how to do this stuff. But for me, it just, I was like, well, like, and I wish more younger competitors thought that way today of like, Hey, like, wait, yeah, I gotta, I gotta pause you one second because I stand on this soapbox, bro, way too often. And I feel like no one listens to me. I'm like, Hey, listen, if there was a, if there was like a cheat code for you to have an accelerated development within our sport, it's take the level one, learn, right. learn, learn the whys and the hows of, and the concepts of why this began and all. Oh man, dude, yeah. we could, we could rant for hours probably about this alone, but I had to, I had to chime in and say, I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. Listen to the next generation out there. You guys got your hopes and eyes on the CrossFit games one day, go take your level one. Yeah, it's got it's- so many answers that you will have unveiled to you through years and you'll get it all in one weekend. And, and just the connections and resources of, of the coaches. I mean, our st- seminar staff are, are made up of, 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 of veteran games athletes and some of the best coaches in the world that you can just literally talk to. I mean, it's just um, really impressed. You know, and, and so, and I went and, and I'll, that, you know, and I, and again, I was like the, the classic participant that like all I could think about was the workout on day one. Right. Like, like how, it, it, I was there for me and it was, you know, it was, but I I'll never forget, you know, it was, you know, a, a seminar staff trainer, Dennis Marshall, still a flow master. Um, and I, I, I was sitting in the front row and I remember <laughs> seeing him deadlift. Like it was, and it, this was in 2009, like, and he deadlifted like 405, you know, like, and that was like, you know, I was like, whoa, you know, like strong, you know, strongest person I've ever seen, you know, yep. like, you know, move beautifully, all this stuff. And, and, you know, and, and the whole staff and, just the education, uh, Eva Claire Sinkowski, you know, and uh, Pat Barber, um, Jennifer Hunter Marshall, um, and, and and John Gilson. Like I remember the crew oh, wow. that was there, and you know, I, and I left that, and and things I, t- you know, I, I, the nutrition, right? That lecture changed my life. Mm. Uh, it, it and it changed my life, and and I dug into it way before, like so, like I went there with my with my cooler of weighed and measured zone stuff right mega nerd um but then and hearing it articulated back other than crossfit journal issue 21 that i've i had laminated you know and um but i was like you know and i i I, their passion i was like you know i should do this for my clients and and i and in just the natural progression i started implementing into my personal training sessions for them and just you know they didn't know they were doing crossfit i was just training as i started to dig into it and i was like man this is really it's fun it was effective like i saw them like because i was like this is i love this i'm you know because that's what personal training is right like you you just do what you think works best right and certainly like when you're a young trainer you're like i do this i'm going to try to give it to you and think hopefully it works (laughs) right like and crossfit was really effective and i didn't have to like you know sit there with a clipboard and with someone with a seatbelt on and a seat, you know, I was like, I could do some stuff. Um, and what really flipped was I actually, for my coaching journey was when I moved back to Syracuse to, you know, um, and I was finishing my, my degree for exercise science and there's a CrossFit gym, CrossFit DeWitt. I remember I walked in there and I was like, Hey, um, I'm, I live up here and I would love to, uh, coach here. And I'm going to train and make it to the CrossFit Games this year. So that's that's my plan. And I remember the owner laughed at me. He goes, "Ha, huh, yeah, like, uh, yeah, right. You'll make it to the CrossFit Games, right?" And and I was like, and of and this was you know back then very similar uh, comment at that time. They didn't have a lot of classes. It was like a couple before work and a couple after. There's nothing throughout the day. He I, he was a, a cop, I think. So sure. You know, um, I was like, okay, fair. Um, but 
you know, I'll mop whatever I can. I'll be here. I'll mop the floors. I'll just hang out. And if you need me, I'm here. And, you know, so I I'd train there and help out. And then when a coach didn't show up one day or someone came in for like, you know, an intro session and no one was there, he's like, hey, you're Austin, you're up. Coach him. And I remember teaching the med ball clean and going through that type of stuff. And I, I just, you know, I, I was like, See, this is awesome. Like I saw, like, you know, I really had that moment. I'm, I'm in a CrossFit gym and, and, and that's when I was like, okay, like, and, and I just, and, and I started coaching full time there. Um, and, and I coached all sorts of stuff, you know, there was, you know, and CrossFit was obviously the main discipline and um, leading up into that was the, the 2010 games. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and that's, so that year I was training and coaching and finishing my degree. And of course, exercise science you have to have like a like a final project and i, I presented um in exercise science where everyone's t is, is basically studying for their cscs yep i presented like crossfit programming as a methodology and i pro i i think i no joke in college presented a, the like fight gone bad and, and i pulled up the video from crossfit.com which videos in 2010 on com were like whatever they were they were grainy and there was death metal behind it yep. right that's the music and I was like, yeah, this is fight gone bad. And I, and people, I, I just remember people like, what am I looking at here? Um, yeah. And so that was how I, and that's how I kind of fell into it. And, um, you know, for the games was the right place, right time. I did well that year. Um, and, and I remember asking Dave, I sat Dave a note, uh, Dave Cash. I was like, Hey, you know, I'd love to intern for seminar staff. Mm. And I sent an email, um, and I got a shot. So, you know, it's, you know, like anything in life, it's, you know, it's right place, right time. But I remember sitting there looking at my screen, like, do I send this email for probably three days? You know, like, do I press send or not? Um, and, you know, got the shot and then, um, you know, was able to, you know, start that journey as well. So it was very quick. It's like a year and a half where things, again, times are very different now. Um, mm -hmm. But, um, and then I went all in, right? I, I, it's um, really when it went all in when I, watched every second counts way too much to the point where my wife was like, please, can we not watch every second counts? I, you know, you know, she's like, I don't, I, I don't want to watch Josh Everett and Dutch Lowry and Matt Mursky anymore. You know? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's bad when she knows them all by name, just like that. Yeah. You can rattle them off. Like, no, exactly. No. exactly. I'm like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I, I love that. There are so many, so many takeaways right from, from your story there. Uh, and I can relate, man. I, you know, I, I drank the Kool-Aid. It was very strong. I love the taste. I, I dove in head first, equal background in kinesiology and doing performance training and all that, all that good stuff before I found CrossFit. But lo and behold, it began to monopolize like my mind and my mindset and my psyche. You know, I could still use like regular periodization for my sport athletes and get them ready for their season. And, but I could still make CrossFit a part of it in some way. Right. Or the, or, you know, I, I could, um, I, I started to see where I had more and more of a passion to train people in the methodology of CrossFit and not just in upper lower body splits and the things that I was yeah. traditionally doing um, with my clients before I found it. And even the seminar staff journey, man, I, I, I have to agree with you, Austin, where it's like there's a lot of folks who um, might, might be discontent with the way the game sometimes is the, the front expression of CrossFit to a lot of people. Uh, meaning that it gets them in the door. It raises their curiosity or they see the bodies of our athletes or the work that they can do. I mean, I think it's amazing. And I think as we continue to learn how to utilize it as a platform, oh my gosh, we're going to, we're going to keep training or, or changing more and more lives because of that as the way in. But all I wanted to do was throw down. All I wanted to do was win, get to the CrossFit games. Yeah. And you sent the email to Dave to get uh, your journey started with seminar staff. And Tommy Hackenbrook actually sent the email for me in 20, it was 2013 for me. Um, he was like, Hey man, I just want you to know, I, I messaged Dave. Um, he told me they were kind of looking for some more folks to grow seminar staff. And I threw your name in there. He's like, so would that be something you want to do? And I was like, uh, I didn't, I didn't even know I could do that. I don't know how to ever like start that process. So I was like, yeah, of course I'd love to do it. So equally, man, the sport has created so many opportunities for the both of us. Um, and, and of course it led us to this conversation here today. My next question for you, man. And I think the next step in this journey is like, so you're, you're known in my eyes. I came on to, to, to CrossFit seminar staff in, in 2000, late, late 2013, um, mm -hmm. shortly just after like the, the regional season that year. Yeah. Um, I was going through my intern process almost like through the open and, and through some of those winter months and then got on then. And um, 
dude, you you were a beast on the on the road. You were a beast. You were on the road every weekend teaching these seminars nonstop. I yeah. mean, you were you were you were the whole foods maniac yeah. in regards to meal selection. It was like, <laughs> listen, if it, listen, folks, if you might not understand this, but if you were on seminar stuff, you know how it goes. You're like, hey, we're working with Austin this weekend. Oh, cool. We're, we know we're, we're going to dinner. We're going to go to Whole Foods probably on Friday to pick up the groceries. And then on, on Saturday, we're going to go there for dinner, too. Um, so I, I love it. I know there's got to be a ton of stories that we could probably share here through this journey. But you get on seminar staff and then just like everything else that you've you've done in your life, you're, you're head first in. I mean, are you on the we are you on the road teaching these gigs fifty out of fifty two weeks a year? Like, how's it look for you? Well, yeah. So, I mean, when I like for ten years, I was on the road. I averaged uh, I averaged uh, forty a year. Wow. Um, yeah, cause I, cause I, so I'm off the road now. So I'm, I mean, I, I I'm I'm off the road now. But yeah, you, know, you I, put in your time. You put in your time. Yeah. Um, for, oh, I did over four hundred seminars, level ones and level twos. It's amazing. Um, and yeah, I mean, there was. You know, one my craziest, I think, month uh, of seminar travel was we, um, you know, this is maybe 2013 or 14. Around that time, we, we, we were doing midweek seminars at Fort Stewart. Um, and so that was at the military base. And so we would I remember that. And I would also at that time, our international team wasn't as built out as it is now. So I would do international about once a month as well. So I would go overseas once a month. Um, and what that means is, you know, you'd, you'd leave on a Thursday and then come back on a Monday. So it just, as opposed to leave on a Friday night, come back on a Sunday night, it, it, right. it, it flexes your week even more. I remember doing eight seminars in, in one month and I'll never forget, like, you know, and, and, and it kicked in the, the trip start, that month started out with like a, like a seminar in Spain or something like that. Right. So, um, behind the eight ball to start and. I, uh, I just remember like getting out of like a, a bed in a hotel room and like forgetting like what room I was in, like walked right into a wall. Right. Like, like it just, I was, I had no idea where I was. Um, but it's, um, yeah, I, I look at, I look at the opportunity to have done so many seminars, to have traveled the world into so many gyms and meet so many people. It is, it is something that, has, has such a profound impact on my life and, and in the sense of what I learned, the people I was able to interact with um, and the, uh, the other trainers, you know, and this is what people ask me oftentimes. I said, listen, you know, when you're around people that chase excellence, that want to be the best, that want feedback, that are willing to give you feedback, you cannot be complacent. You have to be better. Yeah. And that's what seminar staff for me, and I know from everyone else on staff, it, it, it created an environment and still does this environment of, of excellence. And, and the, it was not only did you want to be excellent for you, but you want to be excellent for you, for your teammate, your brothers and your sisters. And, and that, and that is something that has permeated into, into every walk of life for me in, in that sense. And then, and the discipline as well, okay. that travel that taught me discipline because you know, it's very easy to make excuses when you're outside of your comfort zone, right? And that's when discipline matters. And, um, you know, I was training for the games for, yep. you know, many of those years, almost all. And, you know, I was an advocate, whether, you know, right or wrong, I would, I would never slow down travel. I mean, I would work gigs the weekend before the CrossFit games on the, you know, I would, I, you know, as I got a little more senior on staff, like, you know, in games were in California, I'm like, Hey, can I maybe work in California? There you, go. <laughs> you know, so, yep. But um, I would I would work you know, all, you know all th all throughout the year and and I, training before or training after and you know to to make sure that training was always in, um, and you know and things that I just loved about our community in, in, in the moment I think you take for granted but you know the other the other teammates would just be like yeah I'm in with I'll I'll work out in the morning and I'll stay after straight you know? up, and that to me is like, if you were to say what's the what what is what's the downside of that, I got I I've for so long expected that from humanity, right? Mm. Cause I only surrounded myself around people. Like I was, I, I was in a gym seven days a week traveling world. Like, Hey, you want to work out? Yes. <laughs> I mean, the answer was always yes. And always down. Um, obviously no, that's not the norm, but it became the norm. Um, and that's something that, you know, in the moment was like almost came to expect of like, Hey, you down to train at, you know, 5.00 AM. Yeah. Like, and, and that's, you know, that was the answer anyone would give. So I think those are some of the really powerful takeaways that, um, you know, I'm really grateful for.
How did you, how did you balance, you know, training for the games, the travel, um, and, and even like the nutrition aspect. I mean, I know I brought up jokingly that, you know, you were, you were, you were busting it down at Whole Foods on nights that a lot of the team might want to go out to a, a fancy dinner or, or some, some restaurant and burn it down, but you were willing to, to prioritize like your end goal, right. And, and, and do what you needed to do in the moment. How did, how'd you go about doing that and finding that balance? Yeah. Well, it's a really good question. One, um, balance is something I've never had. Sure. Um, you know, so, and that, and I always, I say, and, and I always like to preface is that, but in someone once told me is that you, you don't need balance. You need to have a counterbalance. And for me in my life, that's my, that's my wife. It, it, it's, you know, she's, you know, stuck through everything with me. You know, we've been together for 15 years and like, and that to me is really important because, you know, when you're on the road that long, you need someone that's supportive of that type of lifestyle. Um, so for me, that's, I think, step one is having that counterbalance of like, all right, I, I'm, these are my goals and I'm in pursuit of them. And pretty much everything takes a second seat to that. Yep. Right. And, and that's something that um, I, I think it's uncomfortable for people to even think or say, but like, that's the, that, that's just the way it is. And, um, and for me, it was I, working and I never look at it as work. It's like, I, it was, it was, a, a passion, a purpose of, of, of doing CrossFit and, and doing CrossFit was just happened to be doing seminars um, and then training. And it, it's funny that, that, that part of the, the, the equation was never hard for me, the nutrition, the recovery. And, and I know this, like it, some people are like, Oh, like it's for me, it was never hard. Cause like from, it was, if there's a variable I can control yep. that can make that, that, that at the very least I can know that it won't detriment my performance, then I should be in control of it, like nutrition, like recovery, whatever it might be. And so it was not even a question. It was, I, it wasn't even a choice and it was never even hard. And I never had the, 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 the disillusion that, you know, eating in a certain way or recovering in a certain way was going to make me fitter. I think sometimes people think that for me, it was, I don't want it to be the reason in my head, psychologically, if I lose an event or I lose a competition that was, Oh, if I look back to that one, and this is how my mind works yep. now, it's healthy, but as it is like, Oh, look, I remember I had this cheat meal five months ago. That's why. Right. Yep. Like I never wanted to give myself that excuse or that out. And so it was like, so it wasn't even a question. So, so, I mean, and I went, I fell into every rabbit hole. I mean, I would wear compression all of the time. Everyone, you know, because someone told me that compression helps you recover. So I wore it, right? Yep. Like, you know, and I remember, I, I remember giving lectures about, you know, we, uh, during the, uh, the advanced coaching concepts course that Eric O'Connor and myself would, uh, would run. And like, we, we talk about recovery and supplements and things like that. And, you know, the, the gist of it is if it makes you feel better, if it, if it, if it might push you into the direction of performing a little better, recovering a little better, whether it's realized or not, but if it puts you in a better place then try it, yep. um, as long as there's no actual detriment, a lot of that stuff doesn't have a lot of detriment. Um, but, and I, and I took that approach with nutrition very seriously. Um, and so it was never hard, um, you know, but not saying it's easy that like that way for everyone. I don't really have an, a, a relationship with food, right? Like I understand that. Like some people like, do, I don't like, you know, you could say, Austin, let's not eat for a day. I'm like, okay. Like I could handle that. Um, like, you know, it's intermittent fast. Awesome. Like, you know, like, you know, let's have boiled chicken and rice. Great. You know, like, so for me that, that, that was never really an issue. Um, so which is, on the road was great because sure, you know, like you said, you go to whole foods on a Friday night, you know, you just get, you know, you get some food for the weekend and, and you're good to go. Um, and it was way cheaper. <laughs> As I always oh, yeah. tell people, like way cheaper to weigh and measure your food and to know exactly what you're eating. You don't eat out a lot. And, you know, my grocery bill when I was training, you know, was, I would zone. So, I mean, I remember I would have the same grocery bill every single week, depending on sales, right. You know, for years. Yeah. Oh man, it, there are a lot of nuggets there. The the discipline that that takes, and, and and you know, it's interesting because even reading through the book Atomic Habits, mm. um, there's there's a few ways to kind of perceive someone's commitment, like yourself, right? A lot of people will say, like, man, what grit, what discipline, what tenacity, um, almost like using words that mean toughness and mental toughness. 
And for you, it's almost like, well, I want this thing. I want to look back and say that I have no excuses about this. So all of a sudden, and the fact now, this is not everybody, but I can relate to you here. It's like not a real strong tie to food in a relationship with food. Like, oh, I need this. It makes me feel way. It's just like food is fuel. So yeah. let's just keep it black and white. Right. And, but for you, it made, it made this easy. It made it convenient and it made it a positive experience because you're saying things like, wow, it was cheaper and I know it nourished my body. So all of a sudden, all these things that people perceive as challenges and difficulties, you have formed to and shape for the ability for yourself to not only be compliant to it because it's a positive experience, but it's easy. Um, and I think there's just so, so many fruits there. Um, and I can relate, man. I can remember stepping onto the first competition I ever did, which was the Southwest Regional in 2011. And mm. the way that my body felt um, in some of those events where I felt almost helpless, it, whether it was because I was at so much of a threshold or it was local muscle endurance or a skill set that limited me, the moment as a competitor in my mind that I experienced those things, yeah. I had to do everything else the right way so that I knew when I, when I reached that point again, that there were no questions like you mentioned, right? It's like, I never wanted to have that sensation and look around at my other competitors and they're like doing more work than I am or they're almost done. And I'm like, oh man, yeah. It's because I wasn't taking care of my body. It's because I didn't go to sleep. It was because I didn't weigh and measure my food. Right. Like, oh, you know, the inconvenience of me using a food scale was so high that now I'm in sixth place and I'm not going to the CrossFit games and I just needed to be top five. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I, I completely relate to you there, man. I Yeah. I wonder if it's harder for people and I'd love to get your opinion on this. Do you think it's harder for folks who, you know, let's say, let's say the, the desire is you and I are, 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 you know, walking someone through their fitness journey and they're just like, you know, coach Austin, I just, I really want to, I really want to lose 10 pounds. Hmm. Do you think it's that much harder for someone that wants to lose 10 pounds than it is for someone that wants to compete at a high level to dial in their nutrition? Do you think it's a just different psychological approach? Yeah. You know, it's a great question. I think a lot about it because I've gone through journeys in my, in, in, in how I've worked with athletes and clients and people and nutrition. And what, what, it, what I think that I've learned is it comes down to what, what is, what is truly the root cause, mm. right? What is this root cause of your current behavior and, and, and or behavior change potential where, you know, I want to lose 10 pounds. I believe that you need to actually start to dig into, well, what, ha like, like, how do we get here? It's a, it's, it's a psychological journey because the reality is physically losing 10 pounds in there, are, there are the anomalies. There are, the, there are the cases that are the outliers, but for the most part, it's not hard on paper, right? But it is very hard for most people. Why? Because it, it, there's no true reason to, of, uh, that they've understood on why. And I think that's, what's the challenge because it becomes a, a, an emotional journey, mm. right? It's, it's not the work that needs to be done. It's not the food that needs to be prepped. It's the, it's the, cause consistency, right? That's what matters, right? Really what it comes down to is being consistent and, and it can't even be a question, right? Where like, if you're going to, you know, be consistent and be disciplined, you need to have a driving force and reason because the reality is it's not easy. Right? It's not going to get easy. But they're just, it just there, but there can't be a question. You can't negotiate with yourself. And right. the minute you start negotiating with yourself, if you haven't figured out why you're doing something, you will lose that negotiation. And, and so I think that that's like when you talk to me, hey, I want to lose 10 pounds. You, and mind you, you can't just enter into the psychological, you know, you know, existential debate with this human being right away. You need to gain their trust. Absolutely. Their time. Um, and that's why I believe emotional intelligence is actually the most uh, important attribute a coach can have. Uh, and it's very hard to coach and train that. A lot of it is innate. Um, you know, people talk about, you know, they have this it factor, right? I believe the it factor is emotional awareness and intelligence. Um and I think that's what the best coaches have. And quite frankly, in any role, you know, that is dealing with other people, emotional intelligence is the most important. Because um, if you have that, then you're driven, in my opinion, to become a better technician, a better all of these things, because you realize that that you you if you to better serve your people, you need X, Y or Z skill set to be better, to better serve them. And that and you've received that feedback because you've been let in by people. So that's that's my long way of, of saying that. Um, 
it's really hard. Mm. Um, nutrition goals, weight loss, all of that stuff is usually way deeper than just that, that statement. Um, and, and that's why, you know, not to go too far down a rabbit hole. I, I, I try to self-reflect on my, my weakest areas as a gym owner and a coach. Cause I've so, I, I don't own my gyms anymore. Yeah. Um, my big, my weakest areas I believe was, I uh, uh, was consistently setting time to, and somehow to do it and taking away that the operational challenge of it, which was to understand the goals of every one of my members. Mm. I don't think that I did a good enough job after the initial conversation of consistently checking in with everyone. Because as I, you know, as I look back, cause I truly believe that if everyone is, you know, if, if everyone's getting better achieving their goals, no one's going to leave your gym. <laughs> right. So if people leave their gym, other than the normal reasons, moving, blah, 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 they're not getting their goal. They're not reaching their goals. They're not getting results, or they're not aware that they're getting their results. Both of which is the coach's fault. Yep. So, and I believe that I, that is an area that I overlooked. Um, cause I, I, I fell back on the unbelievable efficacy of CrossFit. It's like, well, just do CrossFit. It makes you better. Right. It, which is true, right? It's an intoxicatingly effective program that I I think gave me a little bit of a blind spot as a gym owner uh, to actually dig in a little bit because when you do CrossFit for five or 10 years, right? You you got to know what you're trying to achieve other than just to check a box, um, right? Um, yes, day one, knees out, chest up, butt back, heels down, going to change your life. Yep. Um, no doubt. But, you know, that journey needs to continue. Um, so that's just like that. It's, and, and on that, you start to develop that trust of learning a little bit more about your athletes. No, I think I think those are great points, man. And I, I completely agree with you to start with just, you know, the emotional awareness, the the ability to first understand yourself, because then that's going to lead you uh, and create the capacity to, to really learn and understand others, um, which is which is an interesting thing in itself that we could probably spend an hour talking about. But it's that's hard to learn if, if people struggle with that. You know, it takes a lot of time. Um, empathy is not something. Uh, that is that is easy for everyone to, um, you know, be able to to execute on. Uh, but this actually brings me to, uh, you know, the 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 current role that you even have now, where it's like in your relationship with affiliates, yeah. you are there with them. You're building trust with them. You're and and even if it's just a leadership team that's actually out yeah. doing the door to door or the phone call to phone call or the email to email uh, back and forth with with our community at large. Um, man, CrossFit, we've been going through some things, man, looking back two years ago, right? Yeah. We, we, two and a half years ago, you know, COVID hit, we were, we, we, we went through some things, media, Greg's choice to remove media and, and really affect our platform and the reach and the way that we communicate to people at large yeah. really started to shift all the way back then. And, and what was it? 2018, I believe. Yep. yep. Um, and, and, and so we've been through quite a journey, you know, we've seen a lot of faces shift. We've seen people leave and come back. Mm -hmm. um, it seems as though, and like our community is, I, I would say it's, it's changed and it's different, but for a while we were going through an identity crisis yeah. um, with your current role and where you find yourself now at, as this GM of, of global affiliates, yeah. Where do you kind of see us sitting currently? Like, what what can we share? What are you comfortable with sharing in regards to like where we're at with our relationships with affiliates and how they're yeah. doing? And what's 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 the near future look like for us? Yeah, um, I would say I would I would echo everything you're saying. Is I would say the last five years as the CrossFit community, and then even more so the affiliate community has been hard. Yeah. Um, you know, um, without a doubt. Um, and some of those variables, you know, like you said the world shutting down to, you know, which made everything hard to, you know, a lot of self-inflicted challenges. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would, you know, where we are now, I would say that I am more, I would say more than ever, I'm confident in the direction of where we are going as a brand of CrossFit and as a community. And what I mean, and, and the reason why I say that is, I think that most of us for years, myself included, just thought about my, my, like my gym, yeah. right? Like I never really, I, I never thought about like, what's the direction of CrossFit that never crossed my mind. Right. Like, I mean, to be honest with you as a gym owner, like I, I, I mean, I had 
four affiliates at one point in time, like never once I was like, I'm what is the 10 year plan of CrossFit? Like I like never in my mind. Right. And so, and, and part of that, we had the luxury of, of, it was just, I mean, and I, it was also cause I was so in it, I think. And a lot of us probably fell into that of like, oh, everything's great. Right. And it's awesome. And you, it's like, anything when things are really good, right. Things are really good. And, you know, and, and so now we've kind of, we, we had this pendulum, right. And I believe in this pendulum theory, things swing in one direction. Well, it has to swing in the other. And, you know, I do think that we, we've been through some hard times, but we're starting to swing to this other side and, you know, we do, you know, our plan and goal from the sense of, from an affiliate perspective is how do we do a few things that are really essential to our ecosystem? One, drive more people into CrossFit affiliates. We want more people to do CrossFit, right? Well, we have 13,000 affiliates around the world, right? So we have two ways we can introduce them to CrossFit. We have CrossFit.com and we have our affiliates. Yep. And that was real. That's always been the case. But what I think is, is even more important to understand is you and I found CrossFit from CrossFit.com, right? Mo like we went there, we said, like, that's cool. Now, most people go to an affiliate, right? So, which is great. Yeah, so cool. that's so that's step one, Get more, and, th and that's really important for us. How do we drive more members to gyms, right? That's that's the that's the 10,000 foot view there. Okay. But then even, and then, so if we're going to do that, we need to, one, grow our affiliates, right? If we want to reach more people, we need more affiliates. And we then need our affiliates to be very successful. They need to be healthy, strong businesses. They need to be good coaches. They need to understand our methodology and the ethos of who we are. And, and that is our responsibility. It's also the responsibility of our affiliate community. And I think that sort of, the, it's a, it's a mutual respect, um, right? Where, Hey, like, you know, we're, we want you, we want to drive people to you. We want your businesses to be successful. We also want you. And we, we believe that there our affiliates have a responsibility to chase excellence. Yep. And, give, and, and so with that is another one of our goals is how do we make it easier for our coaches and our gym owners to be better? What does that pathway look like for education? Um, you know, and and really making that clear because intrinsic motivation is good, but also having a roadmap for your life and your profession is really, really important. Um, and so those are things that I don't I would say we don't have all the answers for, but we that's th these are our goals that we're shooting for. Sure. Um, just like, again, going back to like, you know, when I didn't know how I was going to go to the CrossFit games, but I was going to start and try. Yep. Right. And, you know, we will make mistakes along the way, but we will, you know, mistakes will bring up about learnings for us to course correct and, and, and keep going towards that North star. Um, and then all the while is making sure that internally at CrossFit, that we have a team, the leadership team that is, is that we're aligned and we're together. And this mm -hmm. is something that I think is important because now more than ever, people look, our businesses, our affiliates look at us like, and they're like, Hey, we want to be affiliated with you, but we want to trust that you're going in the right direction. And that we're, we want to trust that everyone at CrossFit is aligned. So we have that responsibility internally to make sure that we continually do that, which means we need to make sure that, you know, we're a strong leadership team, that we're communicating, we're listening, we're, and we're pushing forward. So, and those are things that, Again, I think 10 years ago, none of us even thought about, but, and again, time and place was great, but now we have that responsibility where, Hey, you're going to hit your wagon to us. Then we, we need to, we have that responsibility to you. Man, I, I love that. And, and I think it's such an important thing. You know, one of the things for me, man, that I've been thinking about lately is, you know, when, when CrossFit, when I, when I got into CrossFit, right? Like I'm going to use myself as an example, cause I don't want to speak for other people, but when I got into CrossFit, um, there were two primary faces that I associated with it, which was coach Glassman and Dave. Mm -hmm. yep. Right. And so for me, and, and, and this is, this is unique and not everyone will have this capacity. Good night. Greg Glassman is the founder and creator of, of, of CrossFit. Mm -hmm. He spoke with such conviction and he led in such a way um, that like, bro, he could say something that was kind of like off the wall. And I'd be like, yep, totally believe it. Yep. Right. Like there was, there had, he had this unique leadership ability and Hey, those exact personality traits are going to be positive and negatives for any individual that carries such ability to lead or persuade or, or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then, and then as he put Dave and Dave was kind of the face and, and, and voice for the CrossFit games and the villain, if you will. Um, and you know, and, and, and 
gosh, you know, res- respect for both those guys. Love them to death because they've created so many opportunities for myself and for for people that, yeah. you know, I get to rub shoulders with and, and we get to do things like this. But I look at our community now and it seems as though, you know, the faces and the voices that influence us are changing and evolving. Mm-hmm. They're also growing in number, um, meaning that, you know, there, there's more people to look like, like for yourself, for example, like yeah. you, you, you get to be looked at now as the, the GM of global affiliates. And mm-hmm. it's that you, you get to carry that torch or, or wear that crown, which, which we, we've already talked about, like sometimes responsibility and leadership is difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you, and you mentioned this about leadership. So I'm, I'm getting to this question here, run a roundabout way, man, but it's like, we've evolved over time. We've gone from having kind of like one pillar, one voice, one face for all of us to kind of follow. And that created this culture where, and, and this is going to sound strange probably, um, but I think that CrossFit as a whole is a lot of strong-willed people mm. that want to almost give the facade that they don't want to be told what to do, but they want to be told what to do, man. Mm. They really want to be told what to do. And when you mentioned this leadership thing and being on the same page, I think it's a breath of fresh air for me because I think that's what I see. And again, this is all personal opinion, speaking on no one's behalf, but it's like, I think that people just really want to be told what to do. And that goes from like a games perspective that goes from like a, you know, um, an affiliate perspective. And it seems like they're asking for more guidance than ever. And you alluded to that in your answer. So I just kind of wanted to check in on you and just see like, do you, do you agree with that? Is that something that you feel like you um, get from the community as well? Yes. And, 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 and I think that you hit, you know, I think it's, there's not a, an affiliate owner that I talk to today and they say the very similar thing. They're like, man, I wish I, I wish I knew this. I wish I knew that. Um, you know, it would have been awesome to like, and, and now telling us what to have done 10 years ago is different. Right. But there's, the, you know, and so I think, and, and when, when we get in front of our community, there's a lot of the request of, Hey, like help us. Like, like, because running a business is hard. Right. And, and, and we, I think now more than ever realize, okay, it's okay to ask for help, right? And it's okay to, to get that, that, that resource. So that's something that's, and that's new for us, right? From a CrossFit perspective is how can we be that trusted partner, uh, you know, for our community? And, and, and I think that what we have a responsibility is if we, as CrossFit, we need to be a strong, unquestioned, unapologetic voice yeah. in the fitness space, Come on, bro. leaders, right? And the reality is, and this is something Greg would always say, and, and it's like, hey, like, like, be you're either with us or you're not, right? And I think that that's important. Of like, hey, like, we are CrossFit, we are, and 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 there are things, and and it's okay if you're not as well. Like, we don't. It's not like we absolutely. I still love you, and I always tell people yeah. I still love you. But there are these things, and it really, and but it works, and and all we ask, hey, if you're gonna do like, if you're gonna do CrossFit, do CrossFit. Right. And and we're going to help you. And, and, you know, it is different than it was 10 or 15 years ago. And that shouldn't be a shock because we all are all different than 10 or 15 years ago. Very much and so. It's it's not better or worse. It just it is. Right. And, and that's where we and that's one of our goals is to evolve, to make sure that we can support where we are today. And that's why in, in, in 10 years from now, it's going to look a little different. But we do know. And I would say this is this world is a better place with CrossFit. Mm. This world is a better place with 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 a crossfit community and with people doing what we do we know the power of variance functionality intensity overlay with the stickiness of the ethos of our community it allows us to have thirteen thousand affiliates around the world it allows us to have half a million people do the open it 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 is a it now when you know you can talk to a stranger and they say like oh do you go to a box right they've heard something about it right where you know it's there is to even those that are not in our community they're aware of the community and those are things that don't exist um, in other places. So I think um, to me that that's our responsibility. So yeah, you know, people are looking for that because again, people like to be led, right? And, they do. And, and, and that's important. So we need to lead our community. So, and some, you know, yet telling people what to do and leading people, there is, there is a crossover there. It's just how it is presented and it needs to be done effectively and people will fall right in line. 
Yeah, I, I love it. And, and, and yeah, I think a great example is like, we're not, we're not here to be a dictatorship, but we're here to give autonomy, right? Like create this space That's where right. they know they can execute within that space, make it clear, draw the lines, man. I love what you said about, Hey, you know, not everybody's going to be for us and not everybody's going to be with us. And that is a okay. And we're going to respect and admire and love upon you no matter what, but this is the direction that we're going. You, you can get on and ride with us or you can get off and that's okay. I, and I, and I think there's, there's, there's so much that, that, you know, in, in today's society, a lot of times that's, that's not okay to be expressed to some people, you know, it's, as they make you, they, they, they feel as though when we share things like that, that we're putting them on the outside or that there's a good versus bad. And it's just, it's, it's not that at all. It's just that, you know, we got a direction. This is where we're going. And dude, I couldn't be more pumped about the direction. Um, to be honest from, I, I, w I wasn't as involved with seminar staff for about a year and a half got back on because of all the wonderful things that you mentioned about seminar staff, the accountability, the growth, the, like I just missed it. Um, and now that I'm back in the fold and get to see and hear and perceive some of the things and the growth and the transformations that are happening, man, I couldn't be more pumped to be honest. So I'm stoked about it, but dude, we're getting close to time here and I, and I want to make sure that I'm respectful of yours. I know that you're busy. Um, but I got five quick, quick hitter questions that I, that I like to finish with. So I, I kind of, uh, shoot them your way here. Um, you, you probably been doing the open since day one, my man, back in 2011, yep. day 11.1. So if you can remember through the years and do a quick brain scan, what open workout stands out the most to you and why? Oof. It's funny. The one that stands out the most is one I, it, I've been thinking about for some reason. I think <laughs> I saw it somewhere. Is, um, it's the 27, 21, 15, nine calorie row thrusters, bro. And I'll never forget it because I've never seen more fit people bundled so quickly in a workout. And um, it's just, it just devastatingly simple. Obviously, um, you know, it just, and I mean, I, I just, I mean, I saw, I just devastated everyone. And I remember the feeling. And if I, if I'm ever forced to do it again, like in a, I, I will be very unhappy because I know what will have to happen. So for, and I, and I, there's a lot of workouts like that, but that one is, it's just um, very, nasty so i remember that one Fifth, it was 2015 i believe it was 2015 and it was ab it was there there's not even a workout that i would put parallel to it that i've ever done right. like the the ability the output that is that is possible with that combination of movements is absolutely grotesque mm -hmm. you you talk about fit people being in curl positions i've never actually thrown up like due to a workout and i was outside like i ruined my night of spending it with the affiliate because i did the i did the workout and i had to sit outside for like two hours yeah yep. i was messed up man um i remember actually also failing one of my squat cleans to start my thrusters on like the round of i don't know nine or something because yeah. i was just like 95 pounds yeah. <laughs> that's right it was terrible like caught me in the throat i just dropped it it was oh man it was so bad oh my gosh i love that you shared that one because i think we're probably like 12 episodes deep maybe or so with this of this show not one person mentioned that and every time i'm like huh Maybe you missed that one. Maybe you didn't, because that's the one that scares me the most. Scares me the most. Yep. <laughs> uh, well, hopefully, boss don't listen to these and and decide to, <laughs> to, to decide to dose us up again. That's right. Um, yeah. Okay. Question two. What what uh what are your tunes like, man? If you are the DJ in your garage mm -hmm. or you're at an affiliate, what's playing in the speakers? Um, I'm a big country fan. Okay. Um, I like Morgan Wallen. I'm a big fan of Hardy as well. Um, and he's, a, it's a little more rock and roll, which I kind of like, um, like, like, um, uh, Warren Zeters, which is a little more like, you know, it's just like, like Texas country. And I can always do a little Led Zeppelin, um, as well. So like, yeah, a little like country to the rock and roll side of things. So, um, that's, that's, that's pretty consistent. Yeah. I like it. I like it. If the, if the wife's training with you, is that, is that okay in her book too? You guys jive on the same tunes? She can jive with that, but she'll, she will often revert back to like, um, like early two thousands, like R and B and rap, like, like, which is by all good stuff. Like, but you know, there's often times like, you know, it's, uh, I'll get very like, all right, we're, we're back in high school or like early college days when she's working out. Like it'll, it'll yeah. be, it'll be very reminiscent. Yeah. I get it. I get yeah. it. Takes, takes to the good old days, man. That's right. Yeah. Hey, although we both know the good old days are the ones right here, man. We, we're living in them. Um, right. Right. All right. Number three, if you could remove one movement from the CrossFit methodology that would be advantageous to you, so it's its absence helps you out, which which movement are you pulling? Well, I mean, th this is, you know, love, hate it. Like if, if advantageous to me, be no snatches, barbell snatches, 
because they've been the bane of my existence from from a CrossFit perspective. Uh, my poor my my poor wrist can't take it anymore. So yeah, just barbell snatch. I'll dumbbell snatch all day, but uh, I would now. It's also the movement I've done the most in my career because it, it's my weakest. But you take it out, I'm a happy competitor. <laughs> Come on, bro. I hear you there. Listen, we uh, I'm, I'm I've I've got you by a few inches height wise, but our 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 body frames are pretty long arms, short torso, long legs. It's like, hey man, we can we can pull things off the ground, but getting them all the way overhead that's a different task, bro. It's not fun. That's right. <laughs> I agree with you there. Number four, what type of impact overall do you hope to leave on the CrossFit community? Oh man. That's what a ringer here at number four. That's a big one. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think simply put is, is I hope to, and not to be like cliche, but a positive impact. And what I mean by that is specifically is I think we can easily be very negative towards each other in our community as opposed to like very crit like critical of whether it's other athletes or other affiliates or this or that, as opposed to like an abundance mindset, like we are mm -hmm. better together. We are better, stronger, and we are a community. We are, we are imperfect, but we are better. Um, and that's my goal is that like positivity as opposed to negativity because negativity gets headlines. It gets looks. It, it's, it's easy to say something about them as opposed to help each other. So a positive force when it's all said and done that we can lean on each other as opposed to have a scarcity mindset. Mm, I love that. I love that. That's powerful. And, it, and clearly it's positive. Mm -hmm. uh, number five, man. And the last question, what would you say to someone who has hesitations about starting CrossFit? So they might listen to this podcast. They might've heard us, you know, deep dive and nerd out and geek out and create the memories, but they're like, ah, it's still not for me. I'm, I'm a little worried or I might not be accepted or I'm not fit enough. What do you, what do you got to say to those folks? Well, I, what I, what I would always say to someone is just, tr you know, try it. And if you hate it, never come back, you know, simple. just, just try it, you know? Um, and, and it's, you get to at the very least learn something that you, that you can do something you haven't done before, but if you don't like it, that's okay. Yeah. But you really don't, you know, don't have much to lose there. Um, and, and I would, you know, for, you know I don't, and what I would always tell the people is, oh, like, I don't think I'm fit enough to do, to do cross. It's like, do you think that I started a business to find only fit people? So that would be really bad business. Great question. Like, you know, it's, it, it, I would just say, you know, listen, I understand it, but you no, know, like, you know, I'm not, th those people ironically, I, I don't, I don't think about because, you know, they're going to find me no matter what, like, you know, but I, I care about everyone else, which is, you know, you know, that are looking to make a change you know, to, 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 to move, you know, in, into a specific direction. So that's why we exist is to help to get you from where you are to where you want to be. And it's, and that's a life's journey. Um, so I would say that a little bit of a, uh, you know, that's, it's just from a more practical perspective. Oh man. I love that response. And I, and I think it's, I think it's, I think it reflects you as an individual and also high level coaches um, and influencers within our space. And I say that because, man, you have more knowledge than almost anyone and could explain and nerd out on why people should actually be doing it, what it can do for their body, what it's going to do to their blood pressure, what it's going to do to their quality of life, how we can move people from well, from, from sick to well and well to fit. But your answer was just try it. And it's because there's so many benefits in just experiencing what, what CrossFit has to offer um, in so many other ways than just, of course, your, your physical fitness in itself. So beautiful response, my brother. I appreciate your time, man. Um, I, I see that you are still very fit, my friend. I, but you know, I trolled that leaderboard before we hopped on. Are you you doing the, you doing these age group qualifiers this weekend? Um, yeah, I'll throw down. Yeah, yeah, I'm throwing down on them. So I'll um, yeah, I got them. I got them on the calendar. I'll get them in, and uh, you know, we'll have fun. So it'll it'll be fun, man. And uh, I might need to reach out to you because you know what I really want to do is start a petition so that. Um, I don't know who can run it, who's going to sponsor it, who's going to get the media behind it, but I want to see the the Rogan Again Faster crew reunited somewhere in Tahoe at a house again, and, and let's get you guys all together and throw down. That's that's what I really want to do. I, and I would be game for that. So I, yeah, I, yeah, we could we could just do it on our own and just you know we could probably just uh, like a like a reunion, right? Where we just you know 
but like an, an old man's trip is what it would turn into. Yeah. <laughs> straight up, straight up. More, more great memories would be made. Well, Austin, right. thank you so much for your time, man. Um, we could, we could sit here and chat, chat for hours. I look forward to catching up with you in person again, when we get the next opportunity, but thank you for joining us uh, for another episode of more than fitness. Awesome. Thank you.